Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about wardrobe duplicates or like more than one white shirt, more than one pair of black pants, etc., etc. I'm currently in the process of doing my first uh, kind of declutter in a very, very long time. I usually don't do them very often because I do buy with the intention of keeping for a long time. So I try to limit how much I get rid of because if I have less space, then there's less to fill. And so I find that it kind of keeps me on track with my own personal wardrobe goals a little bit better. But I've been in the process of kind of cultivating and curating things a little bit more this past week. And it brought to light a lot of duplicates that I have in my closet. And I started thinking about how when I first started this whole process towards really understanding my personal style, I had a really strict rule of one of each. So one pair of blue jeans, one white shirt, one crew neck, black sweater, etc., etc. But as I've gone through it, I've started to realize that I gravitate towards certain things a lot and having duplicates or even things that just have very slight variations really does enhance my personal style. So today I wanted to talk about that a little bit and share my input, kind of what I keep in mind in how I approach it so that hopefully it can help you if you find yourself in a similar boat. So let's get started. As I'm decluttering my own closet and I started to put together the notes for this video, I realized that the backbone for everything that I talk about on this channel, but certainly for the tips that I wanna to share today, comes down to really understanding your personal style, the things that really work for you and the things you actually wear. There's this idea of kind of our fantasy self and then our real self. And I'm a huge believer in pinpointing your real self in order to get the most out of your closet. So I. I think that a really good way to do that is to understand your personal uniform, the outfit combinations that make you feel like you, 100% like you, you feel really confident when you wear them and they work with your lifestyle so you reach for them a lot. So if you don't know what those are yet, definitely dedicate some time doing that, figuring out those combinations and then experiment with them and make sure they actually do work for your life. And then if you do already know them, go ahead and jot those down. I think that it's really helpful to start to understand what you wear a lot of, how often you're reaching for things and when it may be appropriate to have something in a duplicate because otherwise it'll wear out too fast which we'll get to in just a little bit from there you can start to figure out how often you actually wear things in your closet so we all have that one piece or maybe a couple pieces that we keep but we only wear occasionally maybe they're a little too formal for our lifestyles or a little too casual for our lifestyles but we love them they have sentimental value or there's just something that we're drawn to so we hold on to it so that is going to be something that in my experience really does not warrant duplicates of. But on the other hand, there are other things that you maybe wear a couple times a week. Maybe it's something that's integral to your personal style or your job, maybe a uniform that you have to actually wear for your job. And so I think that by understanding how often you're wearing things, you can really start to understand how valuable it would be to have another piece rotated in. So I've seen people do this in really elaborate grids. I have seen people do it uh, really, really detailed and take massive inventories of their closet. And then I've also seen people do it more casually where you hang everything in your closet and then every time you wear something, you flip the hanger. And then you have people that do it kind of like how I do it. I've experimented with both of those over the years. And for me, what works the best is to just jot it down in my phone. I tend to have a good idea now of the things I actually wear a lot. But when I first started, this was so helpful because I had this idea that I was wearing certain things a lot, but when I actually counted it, that wasn't the case. And I was like almost never reaching for those things. So I think this is a really helpful exercise because like I mentioned earlier, if you are wearing maybe a white shirt a couple times a week, having another one rotated in is very good because it'll help stretch the life of that piece and just make your life a lot easier, which brings us very nicely into my next tip. So obviously, if you're wearing something a lot, you have to wash it a lot and laundry definitely becomes a part of the process. And it's a piece of personal style that I think we kind of forget a little bit because it's the less glamorous side of things, but it's a very important thing to understand when it comes to duplicates in your wardrobe. 
wardrobe and how, how functional your closet really is for you. Because I think you need to understand how often you wear something, how delicate it is. So maybe it's a wool sweater or a cashmere sweater that doesn't need to be washed every time you wear it versus a white shirt or white t-shirt that kind of does need to be washed every time you wear it because it gets dingy. And understanding the wear count and then how practical each of them is for your lifestyle is very important. And then understanding how often you have to do laundry in order to keep those pieces in rotation for your personal uniform. And then how often you realistically can do laundry. That is a part that I think requires true introspection and real honesty on your part to really understand it and be able to build a closet that is actually practical. So using myself as an example, I remember when I had my very first apartment and I started this whole process of really trying to figure out my style and reworking everything and decluttering and going through capsule wardrobes, I did not have laundry in my building, certainly not in my apartment. So I actually had to go to the laundromat and so that ended up dictating a lot of what I added to my closet because it wasn't practical for me to go to the laundromat every day. They would close more often than not before I even got home from work. So I had to do laundry on the weekends, but that meant that I couldn't have just one white t-shirt because it became a real key piece to my wardrobe. So instead I had a couple and I would rotate those throughout the week and wear one and then wear another one. And then by the time Saturday or Sunday rolled around, it was okay for me to do laundry. And that was definitely a trial and error process that I recommend spending time figuring out for yourself. Because as soon as I started to be really honest with myself about how often I could actually do laundry, I was a lot happier with my closet and I felt that a minimized wardrobe actually was practical rather than restrictive, which is definitely how I felt when I first started and I had to navigate the bumps in the road. Now for shoes, I think that it's really important to understand not only what makes up your uniform, how often you're wearing things, but also to really understand how rigorously you're wearing things. And shoes are something that not only do I really love, I think shoes are really good for your personal style and they can change up your outfit, but I also think that they can become a deficit for your wardrobe budget really quickly and you can end up spending a lot of money on shoes and almost wasting that money because your shoes get worn to beyond repair and that's not good. So I think that for this it's really important to be honest about how rigorous your lifestyle is. Maybe you're commuting a lot and walking on concrete. Maybe you don't commute a lot. Maybe you drive and you don't walk and you don't have to worry about them wearing out so quickly. In that case it's probably enough to have just one pair of whatever is part of your uniform. Form. But I think that it's also important to understand with shoes that you really should kind of give them a day off and it's a good idea to not wear your shoes every single day, the same pair every single day, and instead let them breathe and relax and kind of chill out a little bit, get a day off literally. And I think that in order to really make that work for your lifestyle, it's again really important to understand your uniform and how often you're reaching for things. So maybe you love little black ankle boots and you wear them so often that they can wear out really, really quickly and it ends up blowing all of your money. So in that case, I do think it would be a great idea to have another pair that you rotate in so that that way you're kind of swapping the burden and not relying on one pair solely so that you have to wear out the soles too quickly, literally. And I think it's a lot better way to approach footwear. And since I've started doing that, I've been able to keep my shoes for a lot longer. Another thing that I think is really important to consider when trying to understand whether a duplicate is necessary and practical for your wardrobe or where they kind of become excessive is to really start to ask yourself, could this duplicate or maybe a duplicate you're thinking about buying be replaced with something that could enhance my personal style and propel it in a different direction? And this is something that I think really comes with understanding your style and as you start to experiment more and get a little bit more courageous with certain things and really want to make the most out of your wardrobe. Because in my experience, adding just one different piece can really change up everything. And it's something that I've been trying to become more mindful of over the last couple years. So at the moment, for example, I love ankle boots and I have a small collection that I've collected over the last couple years. They're practical for me. 
I really love them. They're different enough, so they change up my wardrobe just enough without being too far out of my comfort zone. But at the moment, I'm experimenting with trying to find a pair, maybe in a different pattern, maybe with some detailing that really sets them apart. So I have something that in a pinch can totally transform my go-to uniform. So it's something I encourage you to do as well because it's a really fun part of personal style and I think a really easy place to start experimenting without undoing all of the hard work that you've done. So I recommend that for sure. And last but not least is probably the most important part of this whole thing and probably the most important thing to ask yourself when it comes to duplicates and trying to figure out how many is too many. And that is, do you have the space for it? Do you have room for another white shirt? Do you have room for another pair of ankle boots? And I say that because when I started this whole process, I was living in New York and I had a really, really tiny closet. It was completely overflowing. My clothes were basically stacked everywhere in the apartment because I didn't have room and I had no sense of style. I didn't really know what I liked to wear and I would just kind of mindlessly go through the motions. So I started this whole personal style journey to really decrease clutter, make sure I was being thoughtful with my purchases and build a wardrobe that actually worked and functioned for me in a practical way. So I also now in my current life don't have a big closet. My husband and I share the dresser behind me here. I get the bottom three drawers and then we live in a really old house. So we only have one closet. It's in the guest bedroom. He gets a half and I get half or I guess a little bit more than half, but it's not a lot of space. So that definitely dictates how much I buy and how many clothes I have room for. And it's part of the reason why I'm decluttering for the first time in quite a long time, because I'm starting to feel that overrun feeling again. And like things aren't really getting used to their full potential and they'll probably serve someone else a little bit better. So I say all of this to hopefully help you if you find yourself in a similar boat. I think that this whole journey is about being really honest with yourself. And I think that the more honest you are, the more you get out of it. So I hope that this is helpful for you. It gave you some things to think about. And I would love to know in the comments down below what you do to approach closet duplicates. Do you have a lot of space? Do you have no space? Does that impact your choices at all? We had a nice little conversation going on over on Instagram in the comments section of a pub picture that I posted about this very topic. And I would love to continue that here. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.